speaking with one of the pastors around here, he made this statement. He said, if I had known that all I had to do was to lose everything to win this many people, I would have done it years ago. Welcome back to another episode of On the Ground with Samaritan's Purse, where we take you to the front lines and behind the scenes of our work around the world. I'm your host, Christy Graham, and today we're going to hear from our staff and church partners serving on the ground in Brazil after devastating flooding. Last month, hundreds of thousands of people fled their homes after days of heavy rains that caused flooding and mudslides across southern Brazil. The river rose to record heights, causing widespread damage in the city of Porto Alegre. And Samaritan's Purse sent a disaster assistance response team to help. And in this episode, we're going to share with you um, how we were responding in Brazil and how you can be praying for our teams as they serve in Jesus' name. I want you to hear firsthand about our response from Leslie Klein. Leslie is a member of our disaster assistance response team, and I got to talk to her while she was on the ground in Brazil, and she shared what the situation was like in the beginning. Today, it is raining. It is pouring rain. Um, You might hear thunder in the background occasionally. Um, but it, there has been an incredibly large flood. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have created what they call a humanitarian corridor, which is a road that has been carved out for only the use by responders, police. And, um, and so we have access to that. But when you drive down that road on all sides, you see just roofs, like roofs peeking out from the water. It is an unprecedented amount of water and and flooding that is here. And that's just in the downtown parts of the city, but it, it extends far beyond. um, I think anything that we can imagine or have words to even describe. And I'm sure this is devastating, traumatic and rains like you're having today probably bring out more fear and more, you know, anxiety about what that will cause to the already, you know, big issue they have. It does. And it's, you know, it's also, it's, it's every time it rains, it pushes back the, the mm-hmm. date or the time. And when, when somebody can, you know, access their home again, mm-hmm. because right now, you, you know, it's access by boat. Um, the streets are, they, you can't navigate the streets. And so as the water recedes some, well, then it rains. And of course, you know, you, you've got lo- water levels back up again. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it is. It's just, it's a, it's, it can be a, just a, just a, a feeling of hopelessness mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. Um, of how, how, when is this going to stop or how are we going to rebuild? And I want to talk about what we're doing and what you're seeing. But before we do, for people who don't know you, Brazil is familiar to you. You have responded on many disaster assistance response teams. You've been all over the world. But this one is, I imagine, very personal because you've lived in Brazil before. And so what is it like for you personally to respond in a country you're more familiar with? And I guess, how has it been different for you? Yeah, well, it's really interesting. Um, So... My my family and I moved to this city uh, 23 years ago. Hmm. as a mission team um, for a church startup, and um, this was where we called home for for about seven years with that team. Mm-hmm. And so to come, I haven't I haven't been back here in about um, 15 years, wow. and then seeing the way it is now, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's been. It's been bittersweet, but it's been so good on in so many levels um, for me personally, but also for so many of the the people that I know here and that I love here and just to rebuild connections and relationships. And we were kind of based in a hotel right now. And um, the second day I was here, I got off the elevator and there at the front desk was this man. And he said, Leslie, Hmm. do you remember me? And he was an 18 year old kid when I lived here who um, we shared the gospel with. And he was at our, he was at our front desk there. And we started talking and catching up on his life. And, and again, like he just this openness and, and, 
talking about how he had lost his mother and and his father and he was living alone and then his now his his how his house is underwater that they've had for generations and he has doesn't have a car because his car is flooded mm. and he just said i'm just overwhelmed at the goodness of god mm. the the pe- the person who's here is the person who shared the the goodness and the hope of christ with me that god is so invested in the small things that here you are mm. when I didn't even know how to put one foot in front of the other. And it's at this hotel in this gigantic city. And that's the God that we serve. And yeah, it's, it's that God is God being in the details, the tiny, tiny details of seeing what each person needs at the same time of holding the entire world in his hand. I don't even think I can fathom the, the greatness of God. So Samaritan's Purse responded to the flooding, but tell me, I guess, what we're doing today, what kind of response work, and and how has it changed over the time that we've been involved? Yeah, so when we first arrived, water, we were assuming, was going to be a big concern, just mm-hmm. uh, water that, that um, just for people to be able to drink. Not drinkable, not drinkable. Mm-hmm. So uh, we started with um, water, with our wash team, which is our water and hygiene sanitation team. And we started with them and they're putting uh, water community water points in different areas that were highly affected. And through our church partnerships that we have here, um, using those church partners and and uh, a lot coming alongside them so that they, through water, can reach the people in the communities right there around them. Now I want you to hear from Mariana. She's only 16 years old, but she is wise beyond her years. And I was so encouraged to hear her testimony and just how she was seeing God's faithfulness, even though circumstances were difficult. Her community, including her home and church, were all underwater. And her life was flipped upside down, but yet she was able to see God's hand in the situation. And it was amazing, just a teenager, yet she was so mature and she was able to see this as an opportunity for the gospel. Her church was being the hands and feet of Jesus. They were reaching out to people and sharing the hope of the gospel. One of our podcast correspondents, Grace, she was on the ground and she got to hear from her perspective. It's scenario is terrible for all of us, but uh, we are we are happy we are happy because God uh, is provide all the things that we need he um, he's good uh, this is the unique hope of we have in this moment like the things are bad the things are terrible we don't know about uh, tomorrow but we know have a God who is in care of us and others and it seems like the church has really come together to help each other What's that been like, just seeing that happen, yes. and being a part of it yourself? <laughs> I always say it's a gift for us to uh, um, be part of this. We lose we things, but we have God. We still have God. I hope that every everybody can trust in God in this moment. And I say for all of you, God still loves us. He's still being mercy. He's still being good. Um, he is a really good father, and this is terrible. We 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 don't have a control about this, but God have, and I hope that everything be okay. We just need to put our hopes in Him, and He takes um, the other things. I love what Mariana shared. It was such an example of steadfast faith in the midst of trials. And when the floods came, a lot of the churches became shelters for the communities. And many families lost everything. And they weren't able to take any belongings with them when they fled. And now there are thousands of displaced people. Leslie told me more about what she's seen on the ground. Uh, I was talking to um, a lady yesterday. And she and her husband, and they have a a 10-month-old baby. And the water was up to the roof, I mean, up to the ceiling of their second floor apartment. Wow. And so it's not just, you know, the the 
three feet of water, you mm-hmm. know, in the ground level of homes. This is a second floor apartment and it was up to the ceiling in, in their apartment. So it's widespread. Wow. As we talk to our church partners and to those people that are going to be here long term is how can we come alongside them mm-hmm. so that they can show them that that Jesus is still here. God is still here. He knows. He sees. He's He's with them. He knew this was going to happen. And so it's an honor mm-hmm. to be able to wrap people up mm. in our arms and cry with them and laugh with them and do that in the name. I mean, like wearing Jesus name. Mm-hmm. It's not me that's doing it. It's, you know, God sent me because he wants you to know he loves you. And he wants to give you a hug. <laughs> he wants he wants you to see that he cares. And what an honor and a privilege mm-hmm. to be able to do that. I know. And that's what I love about how Samaritan's Purse responds. You know, we want to work with the local church uh, to, you know, one, get to know the needs, get to know what is actually needed, and but also for that long-term discipleship and partnership, because the church will be there forever, and right. we want the people mm-hmm. there to remember who helped them and who can continue to disciple them. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved how you took us, yeah, t- told us about that woman in the apartment. Is there, can you give us another story? I love hearing the personal stories because, yeah, we can read the statistics and see the news and see it on a big picture. But when you hear it from one person and the way that they're impacted, I think it, it hits even deeper. Yeah. So there was a, there was an older lady um, and we were, we were handing out um, tarp and hygiene kits and little solar lanterns that you could plug your phone in. And this lady, um, she had, she had been in the hospital when the, when this flood happened. And after that, they had released her and she had gone, her house had been flooded. So she couldn't go there. So she had gone into a shelter, just one of the very large shelters that are around here. Hmm. And the, the, one of the things that a lot of the, the, churches here are doing is they're going in and they're pulling the most vulnerable people out of these really large shelters and they're putting them into the church buildings. So she comes up to me and and we're handing her this stuff and she just starts hugging me and she starts crying. And she said, things have been so hard Mm -hmm. and I didn't know where I was going to be. I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know where what I was going to do. She said, but because of this church, I get to stay here in this place. And it's bunk beds. So you have to understand this is not like a, mm-hmm. a super nice place. It's a, it's a church building auditorium with bunk bed after bunk bed after bunk bed. And she says, I'm, I'm so thankful mm-hmm. that this is where I get to be. And that I have people that are here that are, that are taking care of me. Mm-hmm. And I just, she's like, I just know that God sees me. Hmm. I know that he sees me because look at where, look at where I am. And, and here you are with these things, with this stuff. And it's just a way that God is, I know that he is with me. Hmm. And I just thought, oh, that's perspective. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, if I were, if I were staying in a bunk bed after Mm -hmm. bunk bed Mm -hmm. in an open room with all these people, I don't know that I'd be saying, yes. I know that God sees me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wish I would say that, mm-hmm. but you know, it's just all these ways that that God is making Himself known to these people in their heart, people that don't even know they're looking for Him. Mm-hmm. And um, speaking with one of the pastors around here, he made this statement. He said, "If I had known that all I had to do was to lose everything to win this many people, I would have done it years ago." Wow. Grace was actually there for this conversation that impacted Leslie so much. It was Pastor Ricardo, and he's actually Mariana's father, the young girl that you heard from earlier. His words became an anchor of hope, and it was such a good reminder that God truly does work all things for good and for His glory. Here's Ricardo. O que aconteceu foi algo muito difícil e traumático, If muito ruim. If you would have told me before that there was the possibility for me to lose everything, all of my material goods, to be able to be in a position of ministry that I am right now, I would have done. Because we are in such a, a beautiful time of, of, of telling people that there is hope. There's still hope 
His name is Jesus. His words really stuck with all of us, and they made us reflect and think, how would I be feeling if I lost everything? What would my response be? What would I be saying? Would I have the desire to share the gospel like Pastor Ricardo and his daughter? Would I be praising God in the midst of a storm and looking for ways to help others and encourage them in the hope that I have in Jesus? Uh, It's only through God's strength that they could have this attitude, but we can have it in our own lives when things are good and when things are hard. I asked Leslie more about our church partners and how they were impacting Brazil. I get the news, and so I read um, just local articles that have been put out. And one of them that I read was the day before yesterday said it was it was just a, a an interview by just uh, somebody who was just on the street. And he said, you know, it's been interesting that throughout all of this, it seems that the evangelical churches are the ones mm. who are responding and who are uh, taking the lead in helping our people. That's where our strength is coming from, is from the churches. And I was like, this is this is the Lord working mm-hmm. in using people who call Him by His name, and they're looking to Him, and they are the veins that are running through this disaster. They're the ones who are surfacing. And, and saying, you know, God hasn't forgotten you. Mm-hmm. And let me, let me show you, I don't know you necessarily, but let me show you somebody who does know you and who mm. does love you. And they are the hands and feet. They are the ones doing the work. They're the heavy lifters. They're, they are coming together. I think probably, um, like I said, in all of the different places I've been uh, in disaster work, I don't know that I've ever seen a a group of of Christians come together any more than I've seen it here. Hmm. Every night when I lay down, I just think, thank you, Lord, for being able to see what your church does hmm. and can do and can be. That's incredible. Now I want you to hear from another faithful servant of Christ, Pastor Isaac. Grace got to talk to him while she was on the ground. On the first day, uh, many people left their houses and came to our church to sleep here because the neighborhood just across the rails uh, was floating. So something around 100, 120 people slept on the first night here. Uh, After that, with a lot of volunteers, something around 200 volunteers cooking meals every day. And the volunteers are from our church. But the whole city is, uh, is working together. It's not just the body of Christ, but and it's a, an opportunity to reach other people and to preach the, go- the gospel, even through darkness. What's on your heart right now as you think about the people that you've been serving? Uh, right now, I'm just feeling that we have to support, to, to carry these people that lost. We've been praying a lot for the minds and for uh, all, all the, the trauma that it's going to be carried for, for years. And the main sentence that we say at our church we have on one of the walls is, you are not alone. I'm challenged at how the body of Christ in Brazil has risen up to take care of their people. And sometimes the comfort that people need is just to know that they're not alone, that they're seen, and to have somebody sit with them in their grief. Leslie is deployed with Samaritan's First many times, but she's also studied biblical counseling and trauma. And I asked her what it's like to apply what she's learned uh, in, in textbooks and reading, uh, and, but then apply it by listening to others and ministering to them in Brazil. You know, there's just a power in sitting down with someone and listening to them and to share life with them. And, and so many times, you know, in the, the day-to-day, get it done pace of life that we tend to have, um, I've been reminded again the importance of just loving people through through stories Mm -hmm. and loving people through time. It does matter. Time does matter. And listening does matter. 
And telling your story does matter because that's where you can stand there and you can you can see God in his glory and how he's working through broken people. Mm-hmm. If you're just getting things done, it's you're not able to see the goodness of God as easily. But when you sit down and and you listen and you just live life together, mm-hmm. um then all then you find hope and you find it together in him. So it's it's just been a wonderful reminder, a reminder that um stories matter. And I can't fix things. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not in my power, but I can listen and Christ will supply. He will give the hope. In walk seeking him and walking through the terrible, terrible things. I mean, there's no denying terrible things happen, but walking and seeking him through that, you come out on the other end saying, God is so good. Grace also shared what she witnessed in Brazil. I just think, you know, I, I have the honor of hearing so many stories as I go out and, and talk to people, you know, a lot of them uh, want to share and they're, they're just so warm. So you show up anywhere and you're offered a cup of coffee, you know? Um, and so it's just been such an honor to hear from them in, in this time mm-hmm. as they're going through this. Um, and yesterday I was talking to a man uh, living in a shelter. And it's a school. I think there are about 300 people there. Samaritan's Purse had done a distribution, um, giving hygiene kits and things like that the night before. So I came back the next day because I heard it was just such a success, you know, that people were really excited about it and um, got to sit down with the man. And um, he was talking, he was smiling. And I, I said, you know, you're looking, you, you look pretty good. But he broke down at that time, <laughs> you know, whenever I said, you know, how, how are you able to smile right now? Mm-hmm. He started crying and he couldn't, couldn't talk for a minute. And so he left at 1 a.m. his house on a boat with his dogs and nothing else, you know, and that's so many people's stories. And I just let him know as he was crying as, you know, well, we're praying for you. Mm-hmm. We care about you, you know, uh, God cares about you. And whenever I said, we're praying for you, he pulled up a video of, you know, people praying for their city <laughs> somewhere else in the world. And he was so touched. He was just so touched by the idea that people around the world are praying. And he was saying, I, we need it. Hmm. You know, I look okay. It's mm-hmm. true. I'm, we're going to be okay. But he really loved the fact that I said we were praying for him. Hmm. So I just want to ask people hmm. to be praying. Just be praying. People are going through such tough stuff, you know, and it means a lot. They feel the power of prayer. And so that's just been on my heart as I talk to people to let them know, how can we be praying for you? Hmm. And they say the hardest part is yet to come as people return to their homes. Hmm. It's going to be emotionally, mentally, physically so tough. And people are going to need our prayer. You know, they need prayers for months and years to come. As I talked with both Grace and Leslie, they emphasized the power of prayer and how it's so important for us to be praying um, no matter where we are in the world. And I love the way that we need people like Leslie and Grace willing to deploy and get on the ground in the midst of dangers and, and lift up our ministry partners. But we also need prayer warriors who are praying and lifting them up as they are ministering. And I love hearing from them on the ground. And it's just evident that our church partners, they have joy. Despite these hard and difficult circumstances, they are able to see God's goodness and His faithfulness in the hard. And I just want to encourage you, uh, whatever you're facing, to have that same faith and to praise God in the valley. And I want to read Psalm 145, just a few verses, because this is what I thought of when I thought of our church partners and heard their testimonies and their stories. It says, I will exalt you, my God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. I will bless you every day. I will praise your name forever and ever. The Lord is great and highly praised. His greatness is unsearchable. I will speak of your splendor and glorious majesty in your wondrous works. And I love that that's what they did. 
They were praising God's glorious majesty in his wondrous works, even though times were hard. They were looking and searching and choosing to see God's hand in the difficult situations. And it just challenged me, do I do that? Do I praise God every single day? And I'll be honest, I do start my day reading God's Word, and I'm encouraged and challenged, but sometimes I forget what I read when I face circumstances, and sometimes my conditions dictate my feelings towards God. And again, I have to come back to that choice. We have to choose to bless God every day and to praise His holy name. He is unsearchable. Um, And so I just encourage you, whatever you're facing, I know we are not in Brazil um, dealing with the aftermath of a flood, but you may have a flood of life um, and, and difficulty. And so I encourage you to look for his goodness, even when things are hard. And you can find out more about our response in Brazil. You can go to SamaritansPurse.org slash explore to see pictures and videos and see some of the faces that we talked about today. I just want to thank you again for listening, and thank you for praying in the way that you partner with Samaritan's Purse. I hope you have a great day.